Welcome to Yates Makes. This video is the first in a series all about stencil style images. Here I am finishing off a piece of multi-layered spray can stencil. Here I am pulling a gel print again using a stencil style edit. So in this video we're going to be dealing with how you can use both drawings and photographs, run them through both Procreate and Photoshop to create a stencil style image that you can use in a variety of ways. Okay, let's start with Procreate app and here's my photo of an old crushed tin can that I'm going to develop into a three-tone stencil. So, step one is to remove the background. Now in Procreate there's two quick ways you can do this. First, if you go to the selection menu, select on freehand and then you can either use your finger or a stylus to draw around the shape you want to remove. Tap on the dot, three finger swipe down and select cut. Of course alternatively you could just use a nice hard edged eraser, set it to a small diameter and just work your way around the object as I'm doing on the screen now. Okay so our next move after removing background is to open up that layers palette and change the background color. You can do that by clicking on the background layer. This should give us a nice kind of mid-tone backdrop to the adjustments we're now going to make to the tones of the object. So let's have a look at how we can start to apply a stencil effect. Go to adjustments and go to gradient map. Now with your gradient map set to black on the left and white on the right, you can see that if you squeeze those sliders together close to each other, you will achieve a kind of stenciled look. Now, depending on the quality of your image, you might find that your image is quite grainy. And if you were cutting a stencil to spray can, uh, to use with spray cans, you might find that that edge is just too fuzzy, too indistinct. So what I'm going to do is apply a blur to my image before doing my threshold adjustment. So find blur under the adjustments menu, Gaussian blur, and just slide this up a couple of percent. So you can see 3% there has made quite a lot of difference. I'll go with one and that should do the trick. I can always two finger tap on the screen to back up or do the reverse arrow and go through those steps, make a few minor adjustments to my blur. Right, my next stage is to get a copy of this layer in my layers palette, that's simple. Open up the layers menu like I've done there, select copy, three finger swipe down, paste on the right hand side and you'll get a duplicate copy in your layers palette. Okay, with the blur applied and the layer duplicated, I'm now gonna go back up to adjustments and back to my gradient map. Now, this first gradient map on our top layer edit that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna concentrate only on the amount of black that I want in my final image. Remember, I'm going through a, th a three-tone stencil here, so whites, blacks, and mids. This is to establish my black. So I'm happy with that. So I'm going to move on and edit that second layer in my layers palette and try and establish the whites and mids. Now the problem I've got is that top layer is going to obscure my layer underneath. So here's a neat trick. I'm going to click on the N, which is my blend mode menu, and I'm going to expand it and choose the top option which is called multiply this is going to make my whites transparent as it's done you can see there but retained my black so that now when I edit layer one back to adjustments back to gradient map this time making sure my gradient map adjustments focus on the amount of white I want in the image when I'm happy with that amount of white which I nearly am now I go back to my layers palette and you will see what I've been left with. Still though, I can't quite <laughs> see where my midtones are. Well, of course, because layer one is black and white. Very simple to solve. Go to hue, saturation and brightness and we're gonna lift the brightness of this layer one up ever so slightly by sliding that slider to the right.
Now from this point, it very much depends on what you want to do with your split tone stencil style image. So, you know, I could go back to this top layer and further crunch the tones in it by adding a gradient map. And then this may make it a bit easier to work with if I was to do a cut paper spray paint stencil. If I was doing a gel plate transfer or a piece of kind of digital pop graphic art, you know, I may want some of that kind of grain and fuzzy edge. Right, for now, we're going to leave it there uh, on Procreate and I'm going to skip over to Photoshop and just see how we can get a very similar outcome with a few simple steps using Photoshop. Okay, so here's my same photographic image open in Photoshop. Now, this, the first step is identical. We need to remove the background. Now, if you've got the most up-to-date version of Photoshop or the 2021 version, um, <laughs> this is so easy to do. You make your layer active in the Layers palette, as I've just done there, up to the Select and Mask menu and you've got this select subject tool now as long as your background is fairly clean fairly plain your the artificial intelligence in um photoshop will find it automatically for you as long as you click selection in output as i've just done there you'll find look it's selected now the problem you've got with this is you've now got your object selected and you want your background selected so you must go to select and invert as i've just done there and you can just simply press delete. Now, if you're using older versions of Photoshop that don't have that kind of AI select subject um, function on it, you can easily get around it by using the um, quick selection tool, the pen tool to outline. You could erase if you're using a Wacom tablet. You can even just paint between two points by holding shift down. There's so many ways. Um, what we'll do though is um, just quickly demonstrate the quick selection tool and this time I'm going to roughly grab all of that background. You can see me expanding the tool size there by using the brackets keys on the keyboard and what you might find is you know Photoshop, the quick selection tool on Photoshop can be a bit clumsy and if the tones or the tonal value in your background to object are quite similar it might over select. That's really easy to remedy by holding Alt um, down on your keyboard. I think it's Command on a Mac. Um, you can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Hold it down and it will kind of invert your tool and you can um, kind of deselect what the quick selection tool has over selected. So that's what you see me doing there because it grabbed part of that, the lid, when I was trying to select the background so in I go again just trying to tidy up and if you find an edge really difficult to catch as I'm doing there you know up to select and mask you can go back in and I'll show you a quick trick using uh, the select and mask function now I would put your view mode on overlay because you get this nice red overlay and you can really clearly see what is selected and what isn't. So at the moment what is white is what is selected and what is red isn't. So up on the top left is this, the second tool down in the menu is the refine edge brush, which is great just for tidying up edges. Um, quick tip if you're ever doing kind of uh, trying to select hair, which is notoriously difficult in Photoshop, you know, that refine edge brush could be really good so been checked again I'm going to go down to my output and just check that it's output to selection okay and you'll see that my background is selected I've got my lovely marching ants going and I can just hit delete and I'm done I'm going to have to zoom in and just grab those two bits of negative space in the ring pull on the can again that's easy back to the quick selection tool it's over selected again, so you can just nibble that back by holding Alt down and tidy it up. Grab that little piece as well and hit delete and we're ready to go. Okay, with everything deleted, let's look at the adjustments and filters we can add in order 
to get this kind of split tone stencil effect in Photoshop. So up to image adjustments and we're going to select from the adjustments menu the one called threshold. So if I expand it now you'll see there threshold. Now you could use gradient map but actually threshold I think is a little more sensitive as we've got the option in Photoshop we'll use it. So it presents you with this dialog box and this slider so if I slide left to right much like in Procreate we split our tones but look again we've got the problem with the blur so I'm going to go to the filter blur Gaussian blur menu so adding this blur is just going to soften everything okay and make the edges of your kind of stencil effect once you go back to threshold a lot smoother so you can see you can blur out your image loads in here but we just want a few pixels just to take the edge off the clarity so let's leave it about there what's that 2.2 that'll do i'm going to okay return to threshold just check okay that looks fine so i'm happy with that as in the quality of line the edge i'm going to cancel it and i'm going to control j in my layers palette to duplicate that image now the process is fairly similar i'm going to deal with my blacks first so back to threshold and i'm only looking at my blacks and you can see there about right that'll do now here is where it differs so i'm going to now get rid of the white from this which is very easy to do in photoshop which would be convenient so select color range click on any white pixel okay that and then hit delete it will get rid of all the white in your image okay now i'm going to go to my base image and back up to adjustments threshold and again just as in procreate i'm going to focus on the amount of white i want in my image so somewhere towards this right hand side is going to give me more white and again i've got the problem i've got my color split but my base is still black so i'm going to hue saturation under the image adjustments menu and just slide that up so that the black becomes gray and there we go the last thing i'll do is just add an empty layer drag that to the bottom and you can either color fill it through the adjustments menu or just grab your paint bucket as i'm doing here and selecting a good strong mid-tone to fill into the background so you can really see the distribution of your tones across your object a little clearer ready to go next step is all about what you intend to do with your split tone stencil image from this point so i use these type of edits both to develop multi-layered spray can pieces like the one demonstrated there and to use as laser printed transfers in gel printing we're going to start with a very quick modification you need to make to your edit for a gel plate transfer so this is kind of where we left off the problem with this in terms of a gel plate is the gray is not going to work well so this is so simple to fix if you go up to adjustments with that gray and white layer selected and down at the bottom there you're going to see half tone click on half tone and then you've got two options really on the left um, you've got screen print on the right you've got newspaper I think the newspaper filter is the better one you can adjust the slider to get the size of your halftone dot pattern bingo you're done obviously you now need to make that background completely clean white to ensure a good clean transfer on the gel plate there you go done right let's have a look at editing for a multi-layered stencil with spray cans this is slightly more complicated if you look at this image here it is a series of layers silhouette through gray into white that order doesn't apply to every stencil it will depend on your image so you're going to need multiple copies and you're going to need your silhouette as shown there you're going to need your next layer and in this case it's a three layered stencil so i needed three copies my final my highlight layer there so let's have a look i'm back in procreate here you can do this on photoshop as well it should be fairly easy for you to work out using the paintbrush 
but if you want a separate tutorial just pop it in the comments I'll sort one out no problem I've chosen a pencil just to highlight some issues I need to work out my order of silhouette first layer second layer third layer so I'm gonna look for islands I've ringed an island of white on grey there that would tell me to look around the image and I see a lot of white islands on grey so white definitely needs to be a stencil layer applied after the grey now if I zoom in a little I can also see a lot of grey islands on black this would tell me I need to cut those grey areas out of a stencil and spray them over the black so I pretty much decided my black is going to be my silhouette now I'm going to check my image and of course I can see a few black islands the pupil I can deal with it's a very simple detail to deal with at the end just by spraying back in but I've got a few other black islands and I've got a few other grey islands on white that I want to try and either get rid of or connect so look on the tail here I'm selecting grey and I'm going to draw some more grey areas to connect up those little fragments those dots I don't want any grey islands on my white white is going to be my final layer so I can't have any islands these small little grey pieces I can just paint out in white and get rid of them now the head on this image is going to need a little work instead of knocking out these grey fragments I'm going to try and interconnect them so I'm choosing a well, like a gel pen something nice with a hard edge and I'm just going to draw in and connect these up so they're not fragmented I need a kind of only white islands over my grey so all of these greys I'm going to interconnect and just make a bit of a web that won't fall to pieces when I cut my white stencil out or my th you know my third layer stencil this will be a lot clearer by the way if you watch the next video installment where I actually cut and spray and build up these layers definitely worth watching these as part of a series trying to make it quite comprehensive cut out some of the pitfalls you may encounter if you try something similar now you can see a few black islands there as well those I would go back in connect up or delete as necessary probably connect those up otherwise I'm going to lose a bit of the kind of tonal form or the form that's suggested through tone hopefully as I said watch the next installment the application of this in the spraying process will make it all a lot clearer okay be sure to tune into the next videos where in one I'll split them up in one I'm going to deal with um, preparing your backgrounds you know loads of collage work drawing work building up an interesting surface to do your multi-layered stencil on and in a separate video I'll deal with applying these stencil style images to do your transfers for gel plate including building backgrounds collage stenciling off areas for backgrounds too okay if you've enjoyed the video remember support the channel uh, support the channel subscribe comment below I'll see you soon for one of the next two videos on multi-layered stencils and spray painting and gel plate transfer take it easy ta-ta